Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This will be part two of the load workup with 30-06. In the last video, part one, which I'll put a uh, card up for right here, um, we did the brass preparation. The last video ended with taking the brass out of the tumbler, ready to put primers in and ready to load. In this video, we'll be working with IMR 4064. Um, in the next video, we're going to be using a different powder, so stick around for that. But in this video, we're going to do a few preliminary tests, and you'll see that I make some mistakes. I do things maybe a little differently than I should, but hey, hindsight's 2020, right? So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Let's get into it. I've pulled the brass out of the tumbler. It is nice and shiny, and all of the lube and brass shavings got cleaned off very well. I did then uh, brush the cases out with a case brush here, and we are ready to start loading. I will say again before I start this load data, uh, do not take any of my load data as your own unless you have first done the research and decided that it is a safe load for you. I am not responsible for any of your uh, reloading choices, especially when it comes to powder charges. So. Uh, we are going to be using the CCI number 34 primers and IMR 4064. I have two powders that uh, would work well for this cartridge and bullet combination, uh, IMR 4064 and H4350. However, H4350 is kind of hard to come by right now and I use it a lot in 6.5 Creedmoor and I want to save what I have for that caliber. So. That aside, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and get these cases primed up. I have 10 cases set aside here, and we're going to use these for just an initial velocity and pressure check. Uh, what we're going to do is load from way under max all the way up to a total of 4 tenths over max on our highest charge, uh, over published max and watch for pressure signs along the way, see what we get, and track those velocities. The data that I'm using today does come directly from Barnes website. I don't have a Barnes manual, but thankfully they do have uh, their data listed freely on their website, which is very nice. All right, let me dump 10 of these primers in here. I had a couple of primer choices that I could go with for this load. Um, had just a few CCI 200s left, not very many. Uh, the Federal Gold Medal Match large rifle primers. And what else? Uh, Winchester large rifle. But I've got the most of these CCI number 34s, and I've been wanting to try them out, so we're going to give them a try in this load. These primer pockets feel very nice. and consistent so far. When it gets to the bottom of the pocket, it's perfectly seated there in the shell. So that's always good. Really the only cartridge I think I've had trouble with getting to seat deep enough so far is 6.5 Grendel, and that was mainly with the Hornady brass, which we've mostly phased out in favor of the star line. All right, that went just fine. All of those primer pockets felt really good. So now we're going to get to powder weighing. Uh, I should have had my scale warming up for a while. So what I'm going to do is set the powder pan on it, turn it on, and I'll turn off the auto off function. And then I'll come back to this in about five minutes after it's just been sitting, and we'll start weighing our charges then. All right, powder scale should be good and warmed up. I am using a fresh pound of 4064. I do have one open already, but I wanted to make sure we got this entire test and load up done with the same lot number of powder. And I don't have another pound in the lot that I already had open. 
I do have two pounds in this lot though, so we should be plenty good on that. Dump some in the bowl and in trickler here. Our first charge here is at uh, 44.6 grains. Barnes lists the max at 46 grains and we're going up to a max of 46.4 grains. Uh, we are doing this in two tenths of a grain increments just for this initial velocity test. This powder scoop has not been used before. And that was the 3.4 scoop, gave about 44-ish grains. And that was 43.4 actually before I start trickling. Let's see what a full level scoop does. Ah, 46 grains, so I'll definitely use this scoop. And I'm going to go make sure that I'm right below the charge weight. In this case, it's saying 44.5. And then get that last tenth trickled. Because we are going in two tenths increments here, I want them to be as consistent as possible. Okay, there we've got 44.6, and I'll double weigh it. Scales reading just like it should. All right, 44.6 on the button. Our next one then is 44.8. I don't think we're gonna have super full cases with this, uh, but remember our bullet is super long, so it's gonna be sitting down in the case quite a bit. And next one at 44.8. I'll kind of gross trickle with my scoop here, and I went too far. All right. 44.7. And 44.8. Okay, you get the idea. I'm just going to keep doing this all the way up to 46.4 keeping track of my brass in the tray, making sure that I keep them all in order. And I'll come back to you guys at bullet seating. Okay, so powder charges have been weighed. Let's go to bullet seating. And I'm kind of interested to see what this cartridge looks like once the bullet's in it. It's probably gonna be pretty neat looking. Let me grab a lock and load bushing here. Okay, and the bullet seating die. If I have any trouble with this bullet seating die at all, which I really don't anticipate, but if I do, I can use the seating die from the uh, uh, my 308 set. And it should work just fine, though I don't know that for sure. So we're certainly gonna give this a try first. Oh, break loose that lock ring. Let me get a shell holder in here, and I'll pull the shell holder out I was using in the priming system, uh, since I only have one here. I'll get this die started, raise the case up in. I'm guessing this die has a crimp function, which I don't want to use. So I'm gonna go down. Okay, I'm feeling contact with the case right there and I've got room, so I'm gonna go a full turn back out of the bushing and we'll tighten it down there. Hopefully we have enough room up here. Oh, that's tight. Uh, hopefully we have enough adjustment room up here. If not, we can back it out further. Uh, let me see here. I'm going to have to get a screwdriver for this top bit. Go ahead and lock down our lock ring. Set this case aside so I don't spill the powder. We're going to go with published overall length on this. 
uh, if we run into terrible accuracy or the bullet jamming into the lands, which I don't think we will, but if we run into that, then I will, then we'll play with the seating depth. Oh, I'm gonna have to get a skinnier screwdriver for that. <laughs> that one will work, but it looks like I'm gonna have to break this seating depth ring loose, loose first. And it's a little rusty, so I'm hoping we'll be able to do it and then grab a wrench. So this adjustment on here is knurled, but it's not, uh, it doesn't have a wrench flat. So I'm gonna use vice grips here. Try not to mar it up too much. Okay, there it broke loose. And I probably put a little ding in there, but not gonna worry about it too much. All right, let's back that way out because I have no idea where we're gonna be sitting. Let's see the bullet. Again, I've said this before, but these bullets are absolutely gigantic. And they are flat base, so they're not gonna uh, wanna seat perfectly. So I'll just kinda guide it on up in there. And it's long enough, <laughs> it's long enough uh, that before that bullet's seated, the bullet's going up into the die. Okay, that's seating it a little ways. We're, we're miles long, but let me uh, take a check here. 3.218 is what we're going for. I don't know why I'm even measuring this. We're at uh, 3.7 inches. So I'll keep raising the ram here. Three point six. Let me see what one full turn gets us. Oh, let me take a little better measurement of that. Three point six two three. One full turn on the seating stem. gets us 3.587. Okay, that's getting us about 35, 36 thousandths per turn. And we need to go down to 3.218. So a little math is telling me that we're gonna need about 10 turns of this to get where we wanna go. Uh, I'm gonna start out with five, just to confirm. One, two, half, three, four, and five. Three point four zero eight. So, yep, math was correct, showing we need about five more turns. I'm gonna give it four more turns. One, two, three, four, and I'm going only four, just in case I miscounted by half a turn. And we don't seat too deep. 3.4. So we do need about that one more turn. And I'm just gonna touch the lock ring down there. Three point two two eight. Uh, let's see the next one. I'll show you real quick how far we are down in the case with this gigantic bullet. You can see that there are four rings or four cantilevers on that bullet and we are just to the bottom of the top one. That bullet is all the way down in there. Three 
Let me give it a quarter turn more. Three point two two two. Let's seat the next bullet. Remember, we are not crimping on any of these. I am seating a little ways, turning and seating more. And on this bullet, I'm actually going to turn a third time because we've got so far to go. Three point two one nine. That is a thousandth off from where we want to be. So we're going to leave the seating stem right there. Let me give that lock ring just a little bit more snug, and we'll go ahead and seat the rest of these bullets. I'm starting, you can probably see the lever back here. I'm starting seating clear up here, which is not, not normal. A couple little turns. The reason I turn the case in the shell holder uh, for different parts is to make sure that everything is lined up and it gets seated concentric. If for some reason something started out crooked, uh, we could actually bend the neck of the case a little bit and make the whole thing out of concentric. Unfortunately, I don't have a way to measure concentricity. I have not purchased a concentricity gauge. So uh, don't have any way to measure run out right now. But uh, that is my method for uh, helping to control it a little bit. And from what I've heard from other reloaders, it does help. I'm starting seating very gently uh, because I believe we've got a little too much neck tension on these and that's again set by the sizing die. We're shaving just a tiny bit of copper off and these all are all copper bullets. Uh, so we're just shaving a little bit of that copper. Let's measure the neck and see if we can figure out how much expansion we're getting. Uh, three point, we've got 0 0.326 inches before seating the bullet. Maybe you can see on my f finger here the uh, copper that came off of the outside, just shaving a little bit of it with the case there. So that was 0 0.326, and we're sitting at point. 332 right now. We've actually got like six thousandths of neck tension there, which is about three times more than I would really like. But uh, that's what we're going to have to go with right now since I don't have uh, an expander mandrel to open them up and give them that uh, two or three thousandths neck tension that I would rather have. All right, and there we've got it. We've got 10 loaded rounds. They look awesome. Uh, definitely look a lot shorter than I thought they would. Again, we may have to ex jump that bullet out just a little bit further. But according to Barnes' website, uh, their bullets like to jump just a little bit farther. So if this uh, seems like it's gonna shoot well, I'm not gonna worry at all about having a long jump. And that still is a pretty sweet looking round. All right, let's go out to the chronograph and we'll shoot these. All right, guys, it appears that I forgot to hit record <laughs> for that first shot, but we have fired our first shot across the chronograph. The gun here is a Ruger American, uh, of course, chambered in 30 6 Does have a Vortex diamond back, 4 to 12 by 40 on the top of it. I did check the torque on the ring screws before coming out to shoot. They're good, the spacing looks great, uh, and everything like that. This gun it seems very light. I would guess, and I haven't put it on the scale, but I would guess about six and a half pounds for the whole package. <clears throat> the last time I shot a 30 6 was my dad's M1 Garand, and it was probably a good three pounds at least heavier than this. So I was worried about the recoil a little bit, um, 
so far on the first shot that I've taken, which did hit 2,400 feet per second, it was not, the recoil's not bad at all, about the same feeling as my 308, which was a huge surprise. I'm sure it will step up as we go along, but uh, at least I'll get worked into it. I was worried about getting hit in the face by the scope. Not a problem at all. Let's see here, I've got my phone timing in between shots. I'm gonna give it two minutes between each shot so that I don't get the barrel hot. And we're ready to shoot the next one. Forgive the glare off the white table. Uh, my normal tablecloth is out of commission at the moment. All right, 2419. Everything's still looking good. I am, I'm surprised. So on the first shot, the primer was a little more flat than I expected. And on this shot, we got a flat primer as well. I was not expecting that with these military primers. I was expecting them to be just a little bit harder. It's not flowing out, it doesn't look like, but it is It is pretty flat. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. There was no heavy bolt lift or anything like that. But if that continues, I may have to try a different primer uh, and see if, it, see if we get any different results. So far, the first two shots stacked right on top of each other on the target. <clears throat> All right, I forgot to hit the lap button, but we are at two minutes and ready to shoot the next shot here. All right, that recoil is getting a little more significant now. Looks like we've got kind of a uh, pretty straight line up in the velocity so far. We're at 2440. Brass looks exactly the same. Bolt lift felt the same. And we'll give it another two minutes. I probably won't talk the rest of this bit. I'll just go through the charge weights. I'll just uh, let you know if anything interesting happens. <laughs> 2469. So far we have gone up by just about between 20 and 30 feet per second on each shot. I'm hoping we'll get a little bit of a level off. So that's weird. The velocity dropped to 2393 on that shot. That's weird. That one came close to hitting me in the face, but it didn't. Okay, we're back up to where we were on velocity, and that was the max load. Uh, 2478 is the velocity on that one. Brass looks exactly the same. No pressure signs on it whatsoever, besides that flattened primer that we've had from the beginning. All right, we are now two tenths over Barnes published max. Remember, don't do this. This is for my data purposes only. Aha! We may be hitting our node. Hopefully. 2464 on that one. Brass looks the same. Maybe just a little scratch that we've gotten once in a while. One more load to test in another two minutes. Last shot, four tenths over published max. Ah, 2469, okay, so we're all hitting the note there. Brass still looks good. Let me get this stuff on a chart, then we'll get down to the bench and talk about it. So before we 
take a look at the data from that test. Let's take a look at the brass. And I think you'll be able to see here that it all looks fine, except every single one of the primers is flat and not like squished out flat. It's not completely filling that rim, but it's pretty flat. Uh, so before we get on any further, I want to do a quick test. So of course we use the uh, CCI number 34 primer for that. I've got three other large rifle primers. What I want to do is load one round each with the Federal large rifle, the Winchester large rifle, and the CCI 200 large rifle. Uh, both of these I have plenty to load with if we decide to go that way. Uh, the CCIs I only have a few left of those, but that's okay. I uh, just kind of want to test them as well, just to see what they look like. We're, I'm going to load up the three la three rounds with the lowest charge, uh, 44.6 grains, and I'm going to get out and shoot one of each of these primers just to see what it looks like. If there's no change, if they're all flattened, kind of like these, I'm not going to be worried about it. I'm going to continue on. Uh, as we'll see in a few minutes, I think we've got some solid data to go off of, and I'm not extremely worried about this. However, if there's a primer that shows promise in not flattening, I might want to use that instead. So I'm going to load up these three rounds quick, and we'll get out and shoot them just to probably just into uh, into the dirt and uh, just see what the primers are. Now, to be 100% fair, these primers all look different from the start. You can see they've got different amounts of curve to the primer. I'll put a picture of that up for you to see here. Uh, anyway, I do have the cases marked with Sharpie uh, so that I know which one is which for sure because the Winchester is the only one that's that uh, kind of goldish color. The other two will probably look identical after I find them. So let's just shoot these real quick. Uh, this one is the Federal. Man, standing up the recoil on that is really not bad at all. Yep, that one looks exactly the same. Now that was the Federal. This is the Winchester. Flattened. And this last one should be the CCI. flattened exactly the same okay guys let's go get back to the bench and uh, keep working on our test here as I said all three of these primers are flattened look about the same not worried about it we're just gonna keep on with our CCI number 34 the military ones these bullets remember are super expensive they're close to a dollar a piece I'm not gonna test different load workups with different primers. We just don't have the bullets or the money to do that. So we are gonna just stick with this primer uh, because we will have several other things we have to test later. Right now, what I wanna do is test one load um, and test it at 50 yards. We're gonna take one five shot group at 46 grains and let's talk about why so let me put up this chart on the screen for you this is the velocity compared to the charge weight data uh, you can see the velocity is there on the line graph and the um, charge weights are down there on the bottom corresponding we've got some weird stuff going on here and you can see uh, that we dipped down and then went back up there in the middle I'm not entirely sure if that's accurate or not, but what we do show is uh, some fairly safe, even velocities along that top edge and a fairly flat spot right in there. That's good. I'm not going to load this, like I said before, I'm not going to load 
over the max charge, mostly because I'm giving this ammo to a friend to use and to hunt with, and I have no idea what conditions this load will end up being shot with um, past just bear hunting, because obviously we're getting 60 rounds of this to him, and there is no way uh, that all 60 rounds will be used for bear. Heck, he could be shooting these at targets in 100 degree weather, or he could be shooting them at a critter or targets or whatever, you know, at 10 below zero. So we don't want to go over that max load. I do feel fairly safe in going with the Barnes published max load of that 46 grains. So anyway, let's take one five shot group at 50 yards with the CCI number 34 primer and 46 grains, uh, one five shot group. And we're gonna look at the velocity number. See if the extreme spread and standard deviation are what we want them to be. Uh, that is both low numbers. And see what the group's like. If that doesn't get us anywhere, if that looks terrible, then we'll try a more traditional load workup. But right now I'm trying to see if we can save bullets. If that load works here at 50 yards, we'll load probably 10 more shots, uh, 10 to 15 more shots, and shoot a couple groups at 100 yards to validate. Otherwise, we'll go with the load. I'm guessing it's not gonna be that easy, but we can hope. So anyway, I'm gonna get five rounds loaded up, uh, just as you saw me load these. I'm gonna get five rounds loaded up with the 46 grain charge, and we'll get out to the 50 yard range and shoot them. All right, folks, I do apologize for the angle of the camera in relation to everything. It is a little abnormal, but it's what I gotta do to get the sun and everything lined up so it doesn't blow everything out. We are out here at the 50 yard range, uh, getting ready to shoot the 46 grain load with the 200 grain Barnes FTX, not FTX, uh, TSX. <laughs> I get all the uh, acronyms confused. Anyway, uh, this magazine does hold four rounds. I didn't know how many it held before, but it does hold four. And we've got a fifth. Go ahead and load that fifth round into the chamber. Got the chronograph set up. I am really interested to see how this load shoots. I'm hoping if I can get under an inch here at 50 yards, that's going to bode well for the rest of the test. Uh, I'm hoping for a half inch, but uh, we'll see. Also, the chron like I said, the chronograph is set up. I'm uh, going to be trying to, I'm going to hope we have the smallest possible ex extreme spread and standard deviation. Uh, so let's get to shooting. The gun is uh, not sighted in. We are just shooting at that target. I'll make a scope adjustment after this group before we get out to the 100 yard range. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this in and get the group shot. I'm dealing with all kinds of bugs this morning. I've not put out the thermocell, and I'm probably going to have to do that if I do anything more out here today after this, but uh, we'll see what we can do. Okay, velocity on that first shot was 2460. We are impacting on the paper, that's going to be good enough for now. Velocity's right where I'm expecting it to be. So good, I'm going to... Uh, set my phone up with a stopwatch. Let me start that now, uh, just so that I can give kind of consistent spacing between the shots and make it about two minutes each. Yeah, brass looks exactly like it did before. I pulled that one. I can't believe I did that. I was adjusting my grip while sighting at the target and uh, shot before I meant to. Definitely pulled that one low and that was on me. All right, well, let's uh, get back to the bench and we'll uh, talk about that a little bit. So that was just gross, right? Let me put a picture of the target with the measurement up here on the screen. 1.4-ish inches. 
which is way too big. And the standard deviation on this group was 21 feet per second. Uh, just ugly, not what we're looking for at all. So I had hoped to not have to mess with seating depth and have to sacrifice a case and all that, but we're gonna have to. So you can see what I've done. Split the neck on that case, purposely, of course. Uh, cut it down so that we can slide a bullet in and out. And of course, out's gonna be harder than in. But uh, <clears throat> Barnes actually has a recommendation uh, for testing seating depth. And they recommend starting 50 thousands off the lands and seating deeper by 25 thousands at a time. They say their bullets like jump. So this right here is the bullet as pushed into the cartridge by the rifling. You can see that we are, if you call them cantalures, I don't know what they are really, uh, but there's four of them on that big old long bullet. And we are sitting at the second one there, touching the rifling. So let me feed this back in again and just make sure that that wasn't a fluke and that I didn't pull it out any while I was wiggling it. Okay. <clears throat> yep, that's where it is. So I'm gonna measure that. Okay, and since we are measuring to the tip of the bullet and it's a hollow point, I'm probably gonna do this with a second bullet just to be sure. Um, and I'm also gonna measure to the uh, to the ogive or to the comparator point on the ogive. Let me get this out of the way. All right, so 2.713 on the comparator. All right, so I'm gonna pull this out and we'll use one more bullet for comparison here. Yeah, 2.713 again, uh, which is exactly the same. Let's see how consistent the tips are. 3.315 and we had 3.313 on the first one. So that's about right. We're gonna go with that as the number. So 50 thousandths less than that 50 thousandths less than that would be 2.663. 2.663. So I'm gonna come over here to the seating die and we'll use this to dial it in. Uh, I am gonna have to back out that stem quite a bit, not sure how much, because remember we were seating uh, quite a bit shorter. Okay, I'm not touching there. We'll go Okay, our target is 2.663 on the cartridge base to ogive. And I think I am actually saying the correct thing this time uh, instead of bullet base to ogive, like I was saying in one of the last videos, that's a different measurement altogether. 2.669, so I'm actually really close with that first one there. Okay, I'm gonna just make a tiny adjustment and lock it down. Because we're not crimping, there's 2.663, okay. Because we're not crimping, I'm really not worried about the neck being lined up right at one of these cantilever grooves. Not worried about it at all. So what I'm gonna do, this is probably 25 to 30 thousandths longer. In fact, let me measure the overall length on this one. Overall length is 3. 265. So we are almost 50 thousandths longer. We're 47 thousandths longer than our initial seating depth. So that's where Barnes recommends starting. Because this is at a longer seating depth and we should have less pressure in the case, I'm going to go ahead and load up five with the exact same 46 grain load. Now this is probably not the best technique and I'm gonna say that right up front. I am trying really hard to conserve some of these bullets and it shouldn't, I shouldn't be wasting bullets in the pursuit of trying to save bullets. If this doesn't work, we'll still be able to use this data. So I hope I'm not wasting bullets here. But what I'm gonna try to do is load five shots with that same 46 grain load at our new seating depth and try it out. If we still get a crappy standard deviation on this, 
We may have to try H4350 and just see if that gets us closer to where we want to be. I don't want to mess around shooting 25 shot load workups with this bullet when each bullet is about a dollar a piece uh, shipped. And I just checked, currently not available for purchase. So we've only got 100 of these. I really don't want to shoot any more than we absolutely have to. I just got a message from the guy we're making this load for. He said with the factory load with this exact bullet, he was getting about two and a half inch groups at 100 yards. That's kind of what we're lining up with so far, but I'm really hoping we can tighten it up more than that. Either way, this next group goes. We're probably gonna end this video here because I know it's getting super, super long. We're definitely gonna try other things until we get this bullet to shoot well. If we can't get this bullet to shoot well, we'll try a different bullet. I've got the, I've got the 168 grain gold dot and I told him that I may try this bullet as well and see if we can find a load for it. We may do this regardless of whether the 200 grain barns shoots well. Man, these boxes are hard to get open. But this is an excellent bullet as well. You can see it's quite a bit shorter. Uh, it, do, it is lighter and has a lead core instead of a copper core, so uh, it's denser as well. <clears throat> but we may try this bullet if we can't get the barns to work out, but I really, really hope we can. So anyway, back out to the range, five more shots with this same seating depth, and uh, we'll see where we get to. All right, folks, for the last part of this video, we're not going to go back down to the bench because I'm tired of moving the camera back and forth. But here's what we got. So that group looked a lot better, right? And yeah, it did. Um, I'm gonna put some pictures up for you here on the screen. We're just over 0.11 on all five shots. And those four shots went into just over 0.6 which is great. Now remember this is at 50 yards, so that equates to like a 1.2 inch group. But as I think I mentioned a little bit ago, uh, I just earlier this morning uh, texted my friend that I'm making this load up for and asked what kinds of groups he was getting. And he said about two and a half inches at 100 yards. We gotta beat that. <laughs> we gotta be better than the factory loads. And with this load right here, I think we will be. The trouble is the extreme spread was 77 feet per second with a standard deviation of 30 on this load. That's terrible, it's not, I, I cannot live with that. Now, these, this, is not, this is not a long range load. He's thinking the, probably the longest shot he's gonna take with this is gonna be 50 yards. As you can see, any single shot that we have fired in this entire test, without any scope adjustments, without anything, would have been well within the vitals of a bear. Uh, that last group at, at an inch, just fine. <clears throat> but I cannot, in good conscience, load up 60 rounds of this stuff, not much better than factory, knowing that we've got a huge velocity string and uh, send this back to him. So I've got two options, and I think you can tell from what I've said which one I've chosen. Uh, the first option would be to go ahead and load up 10 shots, of this exact load, go out to 100 yards, test it out, and make sure we are okay. Then just load up the rest at that if it's fine and send it to him. The second option, which is the one we're gonna go with, is even though I hate to shoot a bunch more of this bullet in testing, I think we've gotta try H4350. That's the only other powder I have that's compatible uh, and I, I think we've got to try it, see if we can get some better numbers and maybe even tighten up the groups a little bit. I'm happy with that seating depth. We're gonna use that same seating depth that we just shot for the next video, which will be with H4350. Now, I'm not gonna show you the loading and everything of the Satterley sort of test uh, that I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna load it myself and shoot it, make sure we're not hitting any pressures, and then we will uh, pick a load or two to shoot groups for on the next video and that is where I will come back to you guys. So 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody that has subscribed. We've gotten over a thousand subscribers. The channel is now monetized. Of course, none of these videos uh, with reloading will be able to be monetized um, because of the manufacture of ammunition. YouTube won't allow that on a monetized video. Uh, so we're not gonna. So I'm not gonna put ads on them. Uh, hopefully they won't have ads for you guys. But I do want to thank you guys for helping me get over that milestone. I really appreciate it. Make sure you go check out the Instagram page, uh, the Outdoor Generalist channel, and uh, also go check us out over on Patreon. There's going to be some Patreon-exclusive videos coming up in just a little bit here, mostly because they're not allowed to be posted to YouTube under current guidelines. So anyway, thank you guys for watching, and y'all have a good one.